um, you know, the feeling you get when you pull the trigger and you know you hit the animal, or even just, I've had a lot of hunts this year that I've seen 12 or 15 deer and they either haven't been shooters or they've been a long ways off. But just the excitement of you watching the animals come in and trying not to move so you don't spook them, but just enjoying watching the nature and you know watching what guy created. I'm a big nature guy. I like to just sit out, you know, in the woods and kind of have some alone time and just I don't know, just kind of sit there and reflect on life. Sometimes you can kind of get into some deep thoughts when you're three hours into a hunt when you haven't seen a deer. You know, um, even those days, as long as it's not you know raining and cold, I enjoy it. Welcome to Chasing Dawn, where we embark on an extraordinary journey into the heart of the wild. Experience the raw, authentic lifestyle of hunters, driven by passion and respect for nature's rhythms. Join us as we delve deep into their world, discovering what fuels their relentless pursuit, their connection to the land, and the respect for the animals they seek. Get ready to witness the chase, to feel what they feel, and to find out why people hunt. Are you ready to experience the true essence of the hunt? Because this is Chasing Dawn. I was probably seven or eight years old, kind of that younger elementary age. A guy from my church had some property by a blueberry field kind of up the road from us. And my grandpa and I went out there one night and I remember it being cold. And I remember what it, it seemed like it took hours and it was probably not a lot of time that actually passed. But I remember stopping my feet on the ground thinking I could mimic a deer and thinking it may draw a deer in. And my grandpa, you know, in his nice loving way, tapped me on the leg and said, Shh, you're gonna scare the deer away. Um, you know, they gave me the whole spiel. If deer don't know what it is, they're not gonna come in, they're gonna be scared. And then what seemed like hours later, it probably was like 10 or 20 minutes, but I had dozed off and fallen asleep and I remember my grandpa nudging me and uh, goes, Brent, there's a deer over there. And it popped up and, you know, looked and of course she saw us. We were sitting on the ground just behind some brush. We weren't in a tent or anything. and. She spooked off and ran away, and I don't remember seeing anything after that. But I remember after that trip, I was like, why do people do this? This is boring. You just sit around and don't do anything. For an ADHD kid like me, my initial uh, impression of hunting wasn't all that much fun, but I got to spend time with my grandpa, and I enjoyed that. And over the next couple of years, I kind of started to get more into it. And then when I was 10 or 11 is when I got to actually shoot. and. Um, of course, that gives it you know a whole other level of excitement for hunting, and that's kind of when I really started to, to fall in love with it, I guess. Firsts in hunting, I guess, have been with my grandpa. My first deer was with my grandpa when I was so probably 17 or 18. I shot a doe with a 30 out six that I had inherited from my great grandpa on the other side of my family, and my grandpa was the one that was with me. So that was kind of a a cool first with him, and my first block was with him, and.
Gotcha. What's that thing? What's that guy? Well, we can pull them left a little bit, but I guess we'll see. When I pulled it back, my initial thought was, shoot, I might have pulled back a little too early. Um, but I drew back early because there was a there was a fawn that was kind of within eyesight and I didn't want to draw back late and have the fawn see me and bust me. So my initial thought was, I might have done this too soon, but now we're invested and we're going to just deal with it. But when I first saw that deer come in, it wasn't actually the deer I thought it was. Initially, I thought it was, there's a big doe I've been chasing for three or four years now and I thought it was her. Turns out it wasn't, but so initially I got that big, you know, let's go. I'm going to get this doe after years of chasing her. And when I realized, I did realize once, once she came into full view, I realized it wasn't her, but I still thought the deer had a pretty decent body on it. So I was like, well, I'm drawn back now. I'm, you know, it's a shootable, it's a shooting deer. Let's shoot her. I don't know. I kind of had the level of excitement of, you know, let's, you know, I'm, I might get a deer here. There was no blood on the ground where the arrow had gone in. Um, where we saw him going to the woods, there was no blood, and it was just pacing back and forth, trying to find blood. I actually started thinking maybe it wasn't as good of a shot as I had thought, and you know maybe I'd hit it in the shoulder or something, and it wasn't going to bleed. And we probably looked for 15 or 20 minutes for, or for blood, and finally my grandpa said, "Hey, I got blood over here." And then from there, tracking wasn't too bad. We found blood probably every 10 or 15 feet or so, and it was. He didn't take the easiest path. He definitely went through, went through some thick stuff and uh, made it tough on all of us. My dad had his dog out there who he's trying to train to track deer, but he's only, I think, seven months old and is pretty new to the whole thing. And so we were kind of trying to go off of him, but also we had that level of, do we trust him? He's young, he's never done this before. It was his first deer. Ultimately, he actually did find the deer and we didn't trust him as much as we probably should have because he found it and barked and we thought he was barking at something else. Turns out he had found the deer, but it's always exciting too to be looking and looking. And we had come to a couple of dead ends and and then walked around and you know refound the trail again, but then to finally come around a corner and through the trees and you know, there it is laying on the ground. That was a cool, cool Good experience. shot. Yeah. When I first saw her, I thought it was the big one. And when she came on, I realized it wasn't, but she's still a good doll. Yep, that's the south line. So, Jordy, we're a half mile from the house. Oh, really? That's a buck. Is it a buck? Is it that little, it's that little spot. It is. <laughs> Photo time, baby. Photo time. You know, there's, you know, there's stuff that's in the food that isn't necessarily good for you. When you shoot venison like this, you know what you're getting. It's, you know, it's all natural. There's nothing in it. It's nice to be able to go out and, you know, shoot a deer and harvest it yourself and process it yourself, and you know what all goes into it. Um, but it also gives you a little bit more respect for and appreciation for the stuff that you, the food that you buy at the stores and stuff because all that stuff comes in the same general way it's still you know somebody has to kill the animal and, and process it and everything all the work that goes into it it's you know it kind of helps you appreciate it a little bit more i think